Greetings and praise the Lord. Welcome to our daily devotion. This is Bishop Dr. Grace Karaoke of Amazing Grace, International Ministries and Abundant Glory, International Ministries. I welcome you to log into our website at www.agracem.org. Partner with this ministry and at the same time follow us on Facebook and YouTube but uh, Bishop Dr. Grace Karaoke and Karaoke Bishop Dr. Grace. I ask you kindly, please, like, subscribe, also comment. Let's hear what God is saying in your life as you do that. Uh, let's pray before we hear God's word. Heavenly Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we are blessed to know that the King of Kings lives in us and is about to do a mighty work in our lives taking us from one glory to the other. Even as we continue to read and hear your word, we thank you that you are teaching us something new every day. And we continue, Father, to launch into the deep so that we experience and even have an encounter with you. We thank you and honor you and give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> well, we, <clears throat> we started on the topic of the Redeemer. And that is our Redeemer, Jesus Christ. And we are on the second episode. And the second episode is on Zechariah's song of prophecy. Luke chapter 1, verses 67 to 80. His father, Zechariah, was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied. <laughs> this is somebody that had not been speaking for nine months. He has not been speaking. And um, actually over nine months because um, he had to wait until the naming of the son. That is when he was able to speak. When he had nothing else to do but to believe because there was evidence that the son that he was promised to be born has been born. Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, because he has come to his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of of uh, his servant David, as he said through his holy prophets of long ago, salvation from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant, the oath he swore to our father Abraham. He rescued us from the hand of our enemies and to enable us to serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And you, my child, will be called a prophet of the Most High, for you will go on before the Lord to prepare the way for him, to give his people the knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins, because of the tender mercy of our God, by which the rising sun will come to us from heaven, to shine on those living in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the path of peace. And the child grew, and became strong in spirit, and he lived in the wilderness until he appeared publicly to Israel. Hmm. Well, let's go back to Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 20. But the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Okay, now remember when Zechariah experienced the miracle, he confirmed it by naming his, his baby John. The people marveled and Zechariah got his voice back. He immediately employed it to give praise to God and to share with us some rather important spiritual truths. He sang what, he, what has since come to be known as the Benedictus. Well, let's look at this affirmation from Zechariah. Okay. One... I believe in God's redemption and salvation. That is in verses 68 to 69. What do you believe about your eternity? Zechariah uses two very important words in his song. One is the word redemption. That word refers to the way in which God has actually purchased us back from the grip of sin, death, and eternal damnation. He has redeemed. He also uses the word salvation which has to do with the being with being delivered from some sure and terrible end zechariah was affirming god's ability to save 
and that God was now demonstrating his saving power to the Jewish people. Now, I want to ask you one question. Do you believe about the saving power of God? If you don't, make today your day of giving your life to Jesus and believe in his power. Number two, I believe in God's faithfulness to Israel. That is in verse 70 to 72. Uh, what do you believe for your nation? God was promising freedom from oppression for Israel. He was honoring his Abrahamic oath, which I believe is in permanent effect. When you look at Genesis 12 verses 1 to 3. Well, I don't believe you can take all the promises to Israel and just apply them to other nations. But there are some principles that we can draw from scripture. That is Proverbs 14, 34. Righteousness exalteth a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Knowing the truth that God promises to bless a righteous nation, what do you believe for your nation today? Can you have revival? Can there be a massive sweeping of the Spirit of God across the land? Can you believe God for your nation like, April, like uh, Zechariah? Three, I believe in the truth, trustworthiness of God's promises. That is in verse 73 to 75. What do you believe about the promises of God? Notice what, that Zechariah uses the words oath and covenant in his song. He is reminding everyone that his son's birth and the preceding, and in the, uh, and the preceding Messiah should come as no surprise. God has promised this day long in advance and now God is simply being faithful to his word. What do you believe about God's promises? It's one to thing to say amen when the preacher says that the Bible is God's perfect one. But your real heart belief will be demonstrated as you claim God's promises as your own and live your life on them daily. Well, let's look at four. Uh, Zechariah, I believe in the future greatness of my son. That is what Zechariah said in verse 76 to 77. What do you believe about the next generation? One of the wonderful things about the heroes of the Bible is the way in which they often interacted, inter interacted their sons, they involved their sons. They would pass on a blessing which is not just something you say before a meal or when someone sneezes a blessing is a deeply spiritual word or touch that conveys worth and value. Zechariah said, I believe that my kid is going to be great. What do you believe for your kids, for your grandkids, for the youth of your church and your community? Don't you believe they can be great things, they can do great things? If you do, when was the last time you voiced that feeling? and even prayed for the youth of your nation. In uh, number five, we see Zacharias believing in the coming Messiah. That is in verse 78 to 79. What do you believe about Jesus? Zechariah knew the Old Testament promises of God and he spent his life waiting on their fulfillment. Now before his very eyes was that fulfillment, he proclaimed loud and clear his belief in one who would visit humanity, give light in the midst of darkness, overcome death, and show us the way to peace with God. What do you believe about Jesus? Was he simply a good man or is he God come to earth? Is he able to light up a dark world? Can he overcome death in your life? Have you followed him on the way to peace? If Jesus hasn't been savior to you, please receive him now by faith. And he will save you, have your name written in the book of life, and have things in your life change, and your lifestyle also changes. Let's believe in Jesus. He is our Redeemer. And let's also continue reading this prophecy by Zechariah, which is also in a form of a song. And let's hear what God is speaking to us, especially about our lives, about our children, and about our nation. God bless you for now. I look forward to be with you again and again. This is Bishop Dr. Grace Kariuki. 
of Amazing Grace International Ministries and Abundant Glory International Ministries, Mother to the Amazing Champions and Mother to the CMCs around the globe. Be blessed for now. Shalom. Shalom. <laughs>